Okay. So welcome again. And uh, uh, the topic of this week uh, basically will be to add the some dynamic behavior to our uh, React application uh, in the form of uh, uh, adding a state component, uh, a state uh, feature to our components. Okay. So if you remember what we did last week was basically to create a tree of components that, that we're rendering, um, let's say, a, a page content that was depending on some external data that we loaded here in a, in a fake way yet. Uh, but actually this data had to be considered as constant throughout the components. Okay, we had no way uh, we were forbidden to, to change the value of, of this data. So the function for, I don't know, adding, removing your exams uh, are not possible because what we said last week was that the properties, the props of every component are immutable constants. So inside the function, as usual, a, a pure function must not, cannot modify uh, the value of its parameters. Okay, so uh, even we, if uh, you know JavaScript would not block us from changing uh, a value of a property, we should not do that. Hmm? Why? Because otherwise uh, React would have no way, no means uh, to understand when a component should be rendered. Okay, for example, the exam table component depends on the content of the exam list. So React uh, must know when the exam list changes in order to be able to trigger a new rendering of the exam table component. And the same goes for the inner components. Okay, so if we have a, an exam row component that we're rendering here, it depends on a given exam of the parameters of a given exam. Uh, it must know when that specific exam is changed to understand whether this row has to be rendered again or not. So just remember, we are not calling the functions the component function, React is calling them, okay? And when is React calling a function? Easy enough when uh, its properties change, okay? So we must be able to change the property of a component uh, in order to change the rend its rendering and so actually the, the final result on the page uh, only in a controlled way. Mm -hmm. So that's what the uh, topic of today is about. But first of all, uh, uh, there's there's a, a stopping point because we are saying uh, that we have we want to be able to store and modify some information, right? Which is called the state, adding some state information into our component. A component remembers some information and may change it. And this is a bit, a bit against the notion of a function. Huh? A function can only see its parameters. We agreed that it should not modify the parameters themselves, so it should only be something that returns a DOM fragment. And how can a function remember the values from a previous calls? If I'm increasing a counter, how can the, a function describing a counter component remember the number uh, that it was reached in the, in the previous iteration so that it can be increased? Okay, a pure function doesn't have any memory, only depends on its inputs. So we are you know, in a, a contradiction so that because we want components to remember something, but we don't want components to, to have behaviors that are outside the pure function behavior, which is very nice for the rendering purposes. So what did the designers of, uh, um, of React did? Hmm? They added some hooks, uh, some uh, tricks, uh, some extra behavior to component functions in order to enable us to uh, add some behavior to our component function, which is not allowed in a normal function. So we are escaping basically the jail of uh, uh, immutable parameters and the pure functions, but only in a very controlled way. Hmm? Uh, so. A pure function could not have any state information by itself because every time you call a function, we start from scratch from the value of its properties, its parameters. We want to overcome that. Also, we'll uh, later on we'll talk about side effects 
uh, which is uh, um, exchanging information with something outside the component itself, which may be the user typing or maybe uh, a network call for retrieving a remote data. So this is not something with, which is uh, uh, controlled directly by our component. It's something that may happen. And if, if this happens, it may have some side effects uh, to our rendering. So all this uh, means that we, uh, a function should have some memory about uh, its current state and some awareness to its uh, uh, surrounding environment, but in a very controlled way. And this uh, very controlled way is called the hooks mechanism that was uh, introduced a couple of versions of React ago. Now, before this, uh, uh, say, um, new library component, uh, uh, we had a very different way of handling with this problem. So we do the, actually, we didn't use functions as components, but we had to use classes in JavaScript, which are different methods, and classes do have a state inside. But now, let's say, basically, uh, working with function is easier and also not so, um, with less, uh, say, syntax overhead, uh, so that uh, we are you know, gradually abandoning the classes component and al always working with the function component. So we are not going to deal with classes here because hooks can solve our all our problems. Mm -hmm. So we can overcome the limitation of pure function in a controlled way. And today we only have a look at how managing the state of a component. And later on, we may also see other type of hooks uh, that are defined sound Sometimes in the uh, standard library of React and sometimes in external libraries, external components. Uh, all the hooks uh, <clears throat> have a, it's a convention that we, they start with the use word. So use state, use effect, use context, use, et cetera. Et cetera. Okay, so uh, as a convention, every fu uh, function that has a name starting with user should uh, represent a hook uh, to add extra functionality to our function components uh, that cannot be, cannot be implemented in a, in a pure function, okay? Um, so there are special functions that behave in a special way. Mm -hmm. So uh, we'll see mm, when the time comes uh, all the, the, the major hooks, uh, but let's start uh, with, the, with the first one, okay? The hooks for managing state and more in general, the mechanism for handling state uh, in React components. So we may remember a conceptual speak picture like that. Uh, we have a component, just to uh, uh, remind the big picture, and which is a function. This function returns an element tree, and this tree contains uh, other components that are their children. Um, and in creating, so this is the return statement of our function. We are returning a fragment that contains nested components. And in calling this nested component, we are passing properties down to this component. So the top-down data flow that we discussed uh, last week, right? And of course, this is also a component that receives also some properties. And the, the value of these properties may affect, will affect uh, normally, the rendering of the output. So the component will render a different set of components or different attributes of the components depending on its own properties. So depending on the exam list, we are rendering two or three or seven rows. And depending on the value of the exam, we are rendering a given name or a given score uh, according to the property of my component. So far, everything is functional. But then a real component may also uh, depend on a, some state information. So like every component also has some state variables, variable or variables, depends uh, on how many of them we have. And the, the value, the current value of these state variables can affect the component rendering. So always remember the component only does one thing in its, in its life, rendering. So returns a, a fragment of the DOM. Hmm? So the only effect that we that something external may have is influence the way the component renders. This way that means that the component may 
build its output depending not just on the properties, but also on some state information. And the difference is that properties always come from above, but the state is something inside the component and can be controlled and can be mutated, can be changed by the component uh, in a controlled way. It's not any variable inside the function. You can define a local variable inside the function, of course you can, but it's not a state information because that variable will disappear at the end of the function and will be recreated from scratch next time you call the function, next time the component is re-rendered. So you, in the intermediate variables, local variables that you define inside the function are just uh, as functional as ever. So they only exist in the context of one single function execution. A state is persistent, so will be remembered across executions. During one execution of the function, we should consider the state as uh, immutable. Okay, And then we may decide that the state needs to be changed in the future. So it's not a variable that you can manipulate and change and increment and do some, uh, anything. Hmm? So let's go into the details about that. So the properties we already know are immutable data that are passed into the child from the parent. A state is some information where the component itself holds some data that it owns, okay, personally. Um, a reactor is able to detect uh, all the changes to the properties and re-render the component, but also all the changes to the state, and it assumes that if the state is changed, the component needs to be re-rendered because something may change. Okay? So changing the properties of a component will re-render it, changing the state of a component will re-render it. And uh, the state information is uh, owned, is private to a component. Hmm? And it can be changed only from inside the component itself, not its children, not its parent. Only a component that defined that creates some state information may modify it. So it's very, very controlled. Um, but we will see that we cannot change it during one execution of the function, but only for the next ex executions of the function itself. Uh, we are not mentioning context, uh, we'll see it later on, which is a sort of a way of having a global state uh, which is accessible to all components. Uh, so in a way, breaking this uh, privateness of the state. But first, let's first understand the state and then we can you know, globalize it if you want, if we need. Uh, okay, properties are very easy because actually they are just function parameters. We already are familiar with those. Uh, when we call a component, when we instantiate a component, we can define the properties just like attributes. And inside the function, we, can, we will find the values inside the props uh, argument, functional arguments. Hmm? They are read-only, they are immutable, we should not touch them. State uh, is a different uh, uh, piece of information and has, has different rules. First of all, uh, we use the, so we must use a hook, a special function, to deal with the state. And in particular, of course, the function is a use state. Use state is a hook that will create one state variable for the component calling it. So, uh, for example, the, the, we will see the details in the, in the next <laughs> minutes. The, the, don't be afraid of all this code. Uh, the, the main line is this one here. So use state, of course, is a function from the React library. And we can call inside the function the use state hook. Okay, you, you read use state, but actually you should read the create state. Okay, use state will create a new state variable and will return two variables. So we are using a destruction statement to uh, capture both of them. It's actually returning a list, an array of two elements, uh, the, the function. And the first element, uh, we are assigning the first element to one variable, I call it hidden, and the second variable, uh, the second component of the array, I'm assigning it to the set hidden. Because they are well, of different nature. So usually we see 
the use state called in this way. Um, what are these two values? The first one is a reference to the state value itself, the current value of the state. Okay, so in this case, it's called hidden, so probably is a state variable that remembers whether some part of the interface should be visible or hidden. So probably it's a Boolean state. I just infer that from the name, it's not in the code. So uh, probably this state variable uh, will affect in some way the rendering. So for example, it will say that if uh, Hidden is true, then show something. Uh, otherwise, don't show anything. And then we have an if statement. Uh, we have a conditional rendering. Uh, the, the ugly ternary operator, is, and, and unfortunately, is, is, is used a lot in JSX expressions to embed ifs uh, in, inside JSX. Uh, and so, depending on whether hidden is true, we render the first one. Otherwise, we render the second one. But We'll create some code uh, uh, together uh, to, to, to gain a better understanding. Let's not focus on this code. Uh, the only point here is that, uh, for a moment, uh, the hidden variable state, uh, state variable uh, has a value, a current value, and this current value will affect the, comp the content of what we are returning. Okay. Inside the return statement and inside the function, this variable hidden should be, or the state variable, all state variables should be considered as immutable values. Okay? Inside the function code. And then, since it is a state variable, we have a mechanism for changing it. And the mechanism is a function that is returned by the use state uh, hook as a second value here. Set hidden, usually we, we call it with set and the name of the state. This is just a convention, of course. Um, set hidden will change the value of the state. So for it's a setter basically uh, for changing the value of the state. So imagine the state as being a set of a boolean object. It's, there's no such thing as that, but a boolean uh, an object containing a value. We you can use this value as you want, but for changing it uh, you must call the setter. This is not a real setter because it's not a synchronous operation. Is not changing the state. It's scheduling a future change of the state. So in the in a given execution of the function, if you call the set hidden to false or set hidden to true, it doesn't change the value of the state. Hidden will remain true or false depending on how it was at the beginning of the function execution. Execution. But the next execution of the but the React then realizes that the state has changed will change the state value and re-render the function. So call the function again with the new value. So when, when I'm calling a setter on a state variable, actually I'm asking React to change the value and re-execute this function as soon as possible. OK? Um, so it's an asynchronously executed operation. And it will be executed when React has time to do that. Okay, we know that it will be executed, but the exact order in which they are executed is not under our control. And this will be especially visible if we have more than one state variable. You can set a bunch of them, but then whether React will execute the changes in the same order in which you are calling the function, or in a different order, or it will batch all the um, modification in only one uh, execution, it's, uh, uh, it's not an under our control. We should not care, okay? We should not depend on that. So every time we need to create a new um, state variable, we have also always these two references, the reference to the current value and the reference to a mutation function, a function that will uh, Change the function itself, change the value itself in the next future. Last, uh, we have the parameter of the, the argument of use state function, which is simply the default value of the state variable. If we don't provide the parameter, the default value, the initial value, the starting value will be undefined. If we pass 
some value here, okay, the first value, the, uh, the first execution of the function, the state uh, will get this value here. Um, okay. So this is just what we already uh, said before. Blah, 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 blah. So updating the state, and then we go to an example. Uh, every modification of the state must always be done through the setter. Okay, never try to modify state variable directly because that change will not be noticed by React and will not be rendered. So we will have some information on screen which is out of sync uh, with information in your variables, uh, and with the, that, that, that will be just the start of your problems. Okay, and remember that your modification will be asynchronous. And the setter function may be called in two different ways. The first way is uh, an expression that doesn't depend on the current state. Let's say a constant expression that depends on properties uh, and other constant values. Constant in this function execution, of course. The pros may change, but inside the function, we consider them as constants. So we are setting the state to a specific value. Or maybe we need to change the value of a state depending on the current value of the state itself. And in that case, we should provide a callback function Set state. So we are not providing a value, we are providing a function. And this function will be called when React decides to change the state, when, sometimes in the future, in the near, near future, properly. When it decides to change the state, we'll call this callback function that will receive the old value of the state and will return the new value that should be applied to the state value. Okay, we have to play with some examples from that. The idea is that uh, since we are computing the new state from the current state, but the actual execution of the state change will be in the future, I want to delay the computation of the new state uh, when that is uh, really applied, because otherwise I will, because in the meantime, the state may have changed due to other asynchronous changes. Okay, so I want to add a fresh version of the state uh, uh, when, when I need it. Um, let, let's start from the simple examples and then try to understand the, the value of this uh, uh, function. Okay, so what could we do here? Let's be, I have copied in the, in the week seven, the, the same code that we had last week. I just added a, a couple of items. So let's start maybe to play with that. Not here in the exam. Okay, so compared to last week, I only added the two elements. One is this average here on the top, and the other is these empty forms that will we play with them in the next hour. Okay. But right now they don't do anything. So uh, they're just empty input elements. Uh, I just wanted to save some typing. Uh, so actually, it's the same identical project as before with these buttons that do nothing and so on. Hmm? And these uh, values that are constant. So the first step, uh, as a first step, I would try maybe to add some very simple st uh, state to this component. Uh, for example, a uh, functionality to hide or activate these uh, actions, these controls. Now, now, let's imagine that we have the list of scores just in a view mode, or we want to go into edit mode. Uh, and we don't want to have all these buttons always available because we don't want to risk it, click, hit and delete, for example. Okay, so actually this table will have two different modes of operation. View or change or active. Hmm? So we should have a a button somewhere 
or a link somewhere where we can actually uh, modify a Boolean value that will tell us whether the, the, the page is currently editable or not. OK? So why should I put it before the table, maybe? Hmm? So I change the rendering of this uh, exam table. And I add one attribute, one state, sorry, one state uh, um, information, very simple one, called uh, uh, editable, set editable, coming from use state, and of course use state should be imported from React. And the default value will be no, false. It's not editable by default. OK? We have just created one state variable. Let's say a Boolean state variable, because we, are, we assigned a Boolean default value. So we imagine, OK, of course, uh, uh, we imagine that this variable will not change types across uh, the execution. So if it starts as a string, uh, we continue a, a string. If we start uh, as a Boolean, we continue as a Boolean. So it's a state flag, basically. Yeah? And what does it do? Well, it allows me to render a button to change its value from editable to not editable and vice versa. And depending on the current value of this button, a part of the table will be rendered or not. So uh, first of all, we have to we need to add a control for uh, changing the value of this. Uh, it could be it could be uh, I'm doing something very ugly. Just uh, one button here on the top, okay, or a link or a message. Let's say a button. And so we have to wrap this table into something. Into a, as a container, and uh, inside this container, I can add uh, one paragraph or maybe one, one row. Uh, so I so I, I don't remember exam table. We are already inside a column, okay? So it cannot create another row. So just a paragraph. Hmm? Um, it's uh, sometimes it's difficult to reason about the HTML nesting when these components are uh, you know, when the HTML tags uh, are scattered across different components. Okay, of course, right now we are just modifying and patching code as we go. Uh, in, in a real design, we will probably start. It's better to start from the, the full page in just in HTML, in pure HTML, and then break it down to components so that we know what uh, uh, every component is doing. But right now we just say uh, it's a button. We may use a button with a capital B from the uh, React Bootstrap library. Uh, and what is the uh, content of this button? On this button, uh, if uh, editable is uh, currently false, uh, we should make we should write uh, um, change or okay. So what we are doing is adding a, a stupid button called change here in a, in the worst possible location. Mm -hmm. I should probably write a line this, but anyway. And uh, when the user clicks on this change button, we should set the state value to true. But if the state value is true, we should render a different button. Or like view, for example. So we have two different renders. Or like this. Or sorry. Or like that. Change or 
view. Hmm? We only need to render one of these two buttons, depending on the value of the current state. So we could, what we could do here is uh, to insert uh, an if statement. So we need, need to enter JavaScript code. And depending on the value of editable, we generate the first fragment or the second fragment. Okay, say so we have a paragraph where if editable is true, we insert button change, otherwise we insert button view. So right now in our rendering, we should only see one button again, which is the wrong one. Uh, yeah, because if it's editable, we should view, go to view and so on. Okay, sorry. View. I love Boolean. So in this case, I, if I click on change, it should become view and so on. So right now, this button do, don't do anything. Actually, we want to make them do something. At least this button should change the value of the state. So how to do that? OK, we can simply attach one callback function to the click event on the, of the button itself. So let me just have some more space. And saying that uh, on click do something or in the second case on click do something else so we can attach an event handler to the click event of this button Last week, we didn't talk about events because we, they could have no effect. We couldn't modify anything. Right now, like we did with normal HTML, we can attach event to, uh, to uh, DOM nodes, React components, but actually they behave like normal nodes. And we have the, uh, of course, uh, uh, we have the braces where we can write the JavaScript code to execute. In this case, if I'm clicking the view button, it means that I'm making the form not editable. So set editable to false. Otherwise, if I'm clicking the change button, I means that I'm making the form editable. So set editable to true. Oops. So if it's working, which is not, let me see. Um, oh, yes, yes, yes. That's an error. Um, what I did here wrong is that I'm I forgot to define the event handler. So uh, what I wrote here, my mistake, uh, I'm calling the setitable uh, method right now, and I'm assigning the results of, of the setitable function to the onClick event, which is not what I want. I want to register, so I'm not passing a function here, I'm passing the results of a function, OK? So I need to, of course, Define a function to be called. So right now I have an event handler because the argument of one click is a function. Before it was not a, uh, that, and this function will be called when the user clicks. Otherwise, I'm executing this function right now, and this will create a state change that will re render the component, that will create a state change that will render a component in an infinite loop. So sorry, it's 
Okay. We may also define a function outside and call the name of the function when things become more complex, of course. So on click, I define a callback that will change the value of the state. Okay, right now it's better. I click on change becomes view, I click on change becomes view, it becomes change and so on. Okay, and I can see in the React component inspector, oh, I have this button here, so let me inspect this component here. Oh, no, it's the, in the exam table component. We have props, of course, and we have a state. And this state variable right now is false. If I click on the button, we see that this state is now true, and so on. It's a bit boring because it's just a Boolean. So what is a bit strange is that this is a function, but and it looks like we are creating a new variable here every time. Because a function calls another function that returns a value. But the second time we call the function, this value is not a new one, but it's a reference to an already created one. So it's a reference to the previous value. Okay? So uh, this value here, false, is only used the first time we call the component. All the other times, this value is no longer used, and the editable value will remember the previous one. So it's not a normal behavior for a function, OK? But it's what, what we want. We, just, we must just be aware of what we are doing. OK, so then it becomes easy, for example, to suppress the, the buttons in the last column when uh, uh, the table is not editable. We just need uh, to put some checks in the generation of the call. For example, the column actions should not be rendered. So I will render it only if uh, the table is editable. OK, so this normal uh, pattern in React, editable and a given fragment, Boolean and fragment. It means that if this boolean is true, an end needs to evaluate and return the second argument of the of the end operation. If this is false, the the, the expression, the end expression will be false, the boolean false. And so we are rendering here false as a constant. But remember in JSX, false and true, all the booleans are just dropped and not rendered. So we are not inserting the false word there. Mm -hmm. So in this case, I'm affecting for the moment only the title here because it is what we are rendering in this component. And then how to make these buttons disappear too? Well, only by uh, giving to the component that, that is creating these buttons the information about uh, whether they should be created or not. I cannot affect their rendering uh, directly because these buttons are created not by me, but by XM row. We should do something like uh, here. Uh, the XM row, where is that? Is composed of an XM data and some XM actions. So I should, uh, in a way, hide this second component, XM actions, so, so with something like editable and action. The problem, of course, is that in this component, editable is not defined. And we should pass a copy of that as a property. The X and row component will never be able to access my state component. So it is, if the uh, X and table component needs, wants to give this information to the X and row component, it needs to copy it into a property. And so the X and row component will access that as a normal prop. And this prop will affect its rendering. If we go up, 
we should we must add to the calling of exam row this property editable equal to editable so this first editable is the name of the prop that we are passing the one inside the braces is the value uh, of the state that we are using of course they don't need to match but uh, So with this simple change, all this table, OK, it's not very nice because everything resizes, but uh, we see that when we go to view mode, all the action columns disappear and all the buttons with that. If we go into change mode, editable becomes true, and so we are rendering this part of the page. OK? Uh, so, uh, do you have any warning here? No, they were all war warnings. And what, as you see, when we click here, the DOM, the, the, the tree of component, will change. We are actually re rendering, rebuilding everything. So, what is happening here is that uh, in the exam table, the user clicking on the button, and our code will call the set editable. Then the component is the component rendering is finished. React will change, will execute this change later on, and uh, we will change this value. Changing state uh, triggers a rendering of this component. So the component is executed a second time, this time with a new value. And uh, this value affects. Uh, the value of a property passed down to a second component. So this second component will have a set of property or parameters that are different from before. And so React will re-render that component, the child. Because one of its properties, editable, has changed. Has changed because it's part of the state of my component that changed, of course, in the first place. And so React will go down and re-render this component uh, with the new values of the property. Sorry, not here, down there. The exam uh, The exam data component uh, didn't change, so it doesn't need to be re-rendered. And uh, this part, of course, is different, and so all this row will be returned in a different way. Hmm? So will call the every every component whose properties have changed or whose state has changed will be re-rendered from from scratch and every time we hope will settle in a in a in a steady state and then the uh, say the regen regeneration of the page is stopped waiting for the next event um Okay, now these buttons are here outside the table. What we see is that the state is usually on the outer components and will a copy of the state value will be passed down to the inner components. Because the only, pla uh, where the only place we, we can change the state is here. Uh, now imagine we want to move this button inside an inner component inside maybe the table rendering component uh, move the button not the state uh, what we are doing here is that we have a state variable and in the same component okay where the state is created we are adding a button to control that state. Sorry. Okay, so the component where the state is defined is equal to the same as the component where the state is modified. That's the easy version. But if we wanted, for example, the, I don't know, no, no, not in this case, a, a child component to be able to modify the state, what could they do? 
I could not move uh, the use state to the children component. Okay, so let's imagine that we are moving because we don't like this button there. I we want to make it better. Okay, I want to move this line to uh, another component. So it's easy to do. You create a, a control button component. Edit control. Edit. Sorry. Here, new file. I call it edit control. .js. And function edit control. Props will be just returning this fragment that we had in the exam table before. Copy, paste, uh, okay, we should be okay with the parentheses. And uh, um, here we are just calling, oh, we need sorry, to export, export, default, edit control. Okay, and so here we are just calling instead of all this paragraph uh, the edit control component. Of course, we need to imp we already as it okay, it's already been imported. It's in the wrong place, sorry. Okay, so I, I, I said it in the wrong direction. Okay, so it looks nice because we just moved an ugly, an ugly part of the code in a different component where we can make it better. The problem is that this component will never be able to run. Well, button is easy to import. That's not the, the difficult part. The difficult part is this uh, set editable and these editable properties. Okay, so having the knowledge of the editable property is easy. We just you may just pass it as a prop like we did to the column table. Set editable is more difficult because uh, uh, the state is not here. This function is not reachable from this component. It's a function that we have in the exam table. Here. So the one idea could be I could move the definition of the state from this point to the edit control. But then, so if I imagine just that I'm moving this here. If I move it here, how can I use this value in the upper component? There is no way to flow some information from a child to the parent. So this cannot be done. And this component needs this information because it's needed for, for rendering, for passing down to the other children. Right? So I need it here. I need to access this value here. And the only way to, uh, to access a value is to define it here or to receive it from my parent. I cannot receive it from my children. So there is no way this would be able to work if we define a state in a lower component. So that state, any state variable, will only be visible or accessible from the component that created it or from its shader components if we pass it as a property. So let's forget about that. So what, the, uh, what does this component need to be able to work? It needs a current value of the ed editable value and a function to call when something needs to change. So if the exam table component, which is the upper component, wants uh, one of its children component to be able to change its own private state, well, is enough. I will provide them with a property containing a callback function that will change my state. 
For example, I may define a function here, um, change editable. which just a, a value set editable to this value. So I can create a function that is able to change the state. This function is inside my component. So it may work. But any, um, any component that, is, that will call this function will be able to change my state. So I can control who can change my state by giving them this function to manipulate. Now, right now, it's a very stupid wrapper because I could have easily passed the set editable function itself because we are not doing anything more. But maybe we want to have more control over what uh, we do when a child component wants to change the state. Huh? But for a moment, we have just a function, and we can give to the edit control the two key pieces of information that it needs. The editable, the current value, and the change function, the callback for changing it. Change editable equal to change so the first one is easy and just copy into a property the current value of the state. And I know that whenever this current value of the state will change, this property also will change, the component will be rendered. That's not my business, it's all React that doing. And secondly, I'm passing to the component a function that may be called when the children component wants. And the effect of this function will be to call this set editable with this uh, value that, we, that is part of the parameter of the function. So actually, we see we are doing a closure here over the set editable function. And this closure will allow a child component to call a function in my context. And so we'll be able to change, to schedule a change to my state. So it's my private state, but I'm giving you the keys to modify it. And that is, is not editable anymore, but it's propped, not editable. And it's not set editable, but it will be props dot uh, change. What was the name again? Change editable. So the child component may access the value and may access the change behavior because I, I gave it that. And so if I try to reload it and click the button, it should behave, it will behave in exactly the same way. So in this way, we are maintaining the top down information flow. All information always flows from top to bottom, from father, from parent to children, and grandchildren, and so on. But we are giving the keys to the grandchildren to change one state in the parent components, or, or grandparent components, by passing down a callback for doing that work. Okay, so when we, wa when we want information basically to flow up, we should always pass down a, a, a callback so that the lower component may change something in the upper component. I'm giving you the function for doing that. Here we have no state. This component has no state. It's just using and manipulating a state from another component, which is from my point of view, you see that it's only properties, so only constant values, only immutable constants. I'm doing this complete prop. Now it's true. Okay, from my point of view, it may be true forever, throughout the life of the universe. 
I should be a, I should do the right thing when this property is true. Then I'm calling this function, may do anything this function, I don't care. If something changes in my props, uh, React will call me again. But again, this is a, it's not a hook, uh, it's not a state variable, the state is up. And this uh, dynamic is called uh, state lifting. So we are, we need to lift the state up to a component level, which is the, it's a, the upper point that is able to, the, the, to include all the lower components that may need to read the state or may need to modify the state. So we see very often that we have uh, some high level components that contain a lot of state, and this state will be managed by lower level components through this mechanism. I passing a current value, I passing a callback down. Hmm? It is a bit strange, but it's the way, it's the normal way. Hmm? Okay, uh, so we might be, uh, sorry, we, we had two different uh, uh, calls here, change editable to false or change editable to true. Uh, we are a bit, we are, uh, if this is true, set to false, if this is false, set to true. Actually, we are just toggling the state. Okay, so why can we just uh, implement a toggle state function? Of course we can. Hmm? We now must implement the toggle state function in the uh, component where we have the state, because the only one can do that. Toggle editable, which is a function where we should return set editable, not return, we should execute a set editable like not editable. This is wrong, so I just made this example to, to illustrate the point. So this works, okay, but it's not the right way to do that, to do it. So what I'm doing here is defining a callback function that when clicked, call the, calls the, uh, when, when you are calling this function, we use the current value of the state and uh, complement it, toggle it, and Schedule state change. So I can do that. I can use this in place of the previous one. So I use the toggle editable instead of the change. I can go down to the control and use toggle. I don't need any parameter again um, anymore. And it should work. Uh, prop toggle is not a function. What did I do wrong? I didn't say this. Sorry. Okay. It is working. Hmm. So it's a bit, I simplified a bit because I don't need to do, well, I just need to toggle in the button. So basically, I could also simplify it by using the ternary just on the text of the button instead of everything else. But let's not change too much. What's wrong with this? Well, the, the wrong part is here where I'm setting the new state according to the old state. It's not wrong in absolute terms, but it may be dangerous according to the timing when operations happen. When is this uh, expression computed? This, the new value here, not editable. When is it computed? It's computed when we are calling this function here. Oh, fair enough. We are, I, I'm executing a function. Inside we have a set, set editable, it has some arguments. Okay, I compute the argument and then I call the function. The function will not change the state immediately, and this is the trick. We'll schedule the state change for later on. 
when the state change will happen, React will apply the not editable value that we computed some time ago on the value of the editable variable that was current at the time when we execute this, this callback. But if this is slow, if this is scheduled late, if there are any other changes to the state, we are setting a state by complementing, by toggling one, one previous state value, which may not be current anymore. It was current here. The state change will schedule for later. Then I will apply later the complement of the old current state. If there were some changes in between, I'm losing those changes. What I really want to do is to delay the computation of this expression until the moment in which the state change will be applied, so that I'm sure to get the current value, not when I'm scheduling the state change, but when I'm executing the state change. So as a rule, and this is what it's, this slide is trying to explain, whenever uh, I'm updating the state and the new state depends on the old state, this is the difference. I'm updating the state uh, with an expression that inside contains the previous value of the state, the current value of the state. So in that case, it will be better to schedule a function to be executed, and that will compute the new value when React is ready to apply it. OK? So for example, a counter that counts the steps, counts the number of times I click on the button. Um, it will be scheduled as a callback that will receive one parameter, which is the current value of the state in the future, and will return the new value of the state to be applied. So that I'm sure that if the steps of state has been changed by something else in the meantime, I'm always picking up the current and latest value, the latest current value, I don't know. There's not enough tenses in the language to, to describe all this time shifting. Okay. Otherwise, if I'm doing just uh, uh, something like this, imagine we have a counter, a button where I'm clicking set counter, and it will increase the value of the counter. So this is actually the both, both of them are trying to do the same thing. Setting the counter state variable to a value which is one more than the previous one. The difference is that in this case, the expression counter plus one is computed when I'm calling set counter. And in the second case, counter plus one is executed when the state change is ready to be applied. And I'm sure that, of course, these callbacks are always synchronous functions. I'm sure that this will be, this plus one will be applied to the real current value. In the first case, I may have computed this expression, for example, 100 plus one, but before React uh, applies actually the real the, the state change, um, there may have been other modifications. So maybe counter in the meantime has been reset to zero, or it's being uh, increased uh, uh, 10 more times. So if in the meantime, counter is being reset to zero, since it's a, it's a synchronous, I don't know uh, in which order the operation will be executed. Uh, I will force it to do 101 instead of one, instead of, incre instead of increasing the current value. And you can try that uh, uh, with a button. And if you click quick enough, you see that you're missing some increment. You're skipping some values hmm? because uh, the, of the order of the operations. Hmm? So as a general rule, if I am updating the state, uh, updating as opposed to setting, setting to a constant value, no problem. Updating according 
to an expression that depends on the current state, always use a callback. So in this case, in our code, I should not, I shouldn't compute the complement of editable right now. I should schedule a callback that will take uh, the future value of the editable and return its complement. So I'm just delaying this computation, and this. Uh, uh, could be the old editable, I don't know, the new old, it's difficult to give a name because it will be the old value of the state in the future. Hmm? So the, the, the future old, uh, or I don't know. Hmm? Usually they call, we call it old because we are thinking in the, in the time frame where the code is executed. So it's a current value of the state that we need to recompute. And the return value is the new value of the state. So for simple, simple stuff like this, of course, the behavior will be indistinguishable. But in general, to avoid the race conditions, uh, we should always uh, work in this way. So the rule is very simple. Does the new state depend on the old one? Use a callback. Otherwise, just use an expression. Uh, and this also is another like advantage if you want. Uh, we can simplify this. Since this toggle editable doesn't have any parameters, we don't need to wrap it in, a, in another function. We could just uh, give the name of the function itself. So if a, a function, a callback, doesn't have any parameter, I just have the name. This is a reference to the function, OK? Don't put the parentheses here. Don't call the function here. I'm saying that the heavy tender is this function. If the function needs some parameters, of course, I need to call the function or to specify how to call the function. And so I need to wrap it in another function that has no parameters and will be called on the on click. Or basically, actually, one parameter could be there, which is the event object, if we want to use it. So these two are equivalent. And they are possible just because the, this callback doesn't have any parameters. If we need to pass some parameters, we should uh, specify another function that at the right time will call the function with the parameters. So right now, if I do this, I will leave both of them, both versions, just to see that they, they play nice together. They are equivalent. OK, so sometimes you see that we are just uh, sorry giving the reference to the function to be called. Other times, we are creating a function that contains the call. Depends on the case. OK, so this was easy or not. We just, we just had one state variable, which was just one Boolean value. But the, uh, the mechanism is, uh, is always the same. So here, the, 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 uh, you know, the main bugs here are remembering all these delayed calls here, like the, like the mistake I did before. Okay, we are focused on what we should, what function should we call, but actually there's another question that we should not forget is when this function should be called, right now or when the event tender happens. So we we'll have a lot of function inside functions like. JavaScript uh, always has. Hmm. Um, OK, the default value right now was uh, of our value, of our state, sorry, uh, was only used in the first render, as we saw. False. So the form started in a not editable um, fashion version. 
and it's only used in the first uh, rendering. Hmm? One common mistake is to compute the or to use as initial state uh, some value that depends on the properties. Okay, I'm initializing a form and I'm passing some value to these forms uh, and they're using the props uh, to define the initial value of the state. This is a common mistake and it's not easy to avoid. And I call it a mistake because when the props change, the state will not be updated. The idea, we, we, we are not going to this today, okay? Uh, will be a problem when we will implement something like uh, an edit functionality, okay? And so when we edit something, we should probably bring up a form that was pre-compiled, pre-filled with the current values, uh, and then the user mm, wants, may modify it. And so the state of the form will be initialized with some current value. So we should be tempted to pass as a property the current value and initialize the state with that. But it doesn't work because the second time we are rendering the form, so for editing another element, uh, the state will not be initialized because it will be initialized only when the component is created. Okay, it's something okay, that uh, we'll, uh, we'll fight against uh, probably next week. So for the moment, just remember a rule. Try, when you initialize a state, uh, not to depend on some properties that may change. Try to initialize it with a constant. And if you don't tell the right constant, put zero, put null, and then update it at the, at the first possible location, the first rendering, you will update it into your code. So you will have maybe an extra render, because you are rendering first with some dummy default value, and the first code, if you find that the state is null, uh, change it to something maybe more meaningful, and then we render the component. But then you are controlling when the component is changed. And inside the code, you may use the current value of the properties. Hmm? But we'll see the, that it's a, a complex behavior that is not for today. OK, here we have some examples, but uh, more or less uh, are uh, similar to the current one. Here we are, it's using a counter as an integer value instead of, uh, of, um, of, a, of a Boolean. But as, as, as I mentioned, we'll come to this uh, later. What happens if we have more complex state, more, inf more state information that we want to manage? Well, we may call how many use state hooks as we want. Every time we call use state, it will create a new state variable, and they can give a name to each of them with their own, <laughs> their specific setter function and their specific default value. These are all independent state variables that can be set separately from each other. Okay. Um, it's better in React to split the state, if you have a lot of, inf of information to remember, we should be, we could be tempted to put all of this information into one object and create just one state of, of type object. In reality, it's preferable to break it down into separate variables uh, to minimize rendering. If we have all the state information into one object, whenever one of this information change, changes, the object changes, and so all the components that depend on that object uh, will uh, need to be re-rendered. And that means uh, even components that depend on another attribute of that object. Hmm? And React doesn't go into the detail to see which attribute to change. It sees a new object, and so it will render all the dependents. OK? So we, if you have, you have an object with five uh, properties, you change one of them, you are re-rendering the components that also depend on the other properties. If you split them, then if you change uh, mode, 
uh, you will only render the components that explicitly depend on the mod state. So all the changes are independent, can be scheduled separately, and can only render selectively those components that really use that property. Okay? So we tend in React to use uh, more simple values instead of complex objects. And also remember, we may use objects as a state, of course, we may, any JavaScript object, but uh, we always we should always think of these objects as immutable. And we see in a, in a moment uh, what, it, what, is, what this means. If we have, uh, for example, an array of elements as a state, the current value of the array should be thought as an immutable value. The only way to change that array should be through the set state, set whatever, set the name, the set of function. So we cannot modify the third element of the array. We cannot add one element to this array. We must call the set with a brand new array containing the new element or containing the change element. OK, so working with immutable values means that whenever you need to change something, you need to create a new object where you copy all the, say, uh, the values that don't need to change, and you add or delete or modify the elements that need to change. When we call use uh, set count, set it, set something, the parameter is always a new object. Must be a new object. It cannot be a modified copy of the current one. First, because we cannot, we should not, we are forbidden to modify the current version. And second, because we don't know when the um, schedule will be up, uh, executed. So actually, we really we don't know which modification could have been made in, in the meantime. It would be dangerous. Um, in development mode, also React is also trying to protect us for, from the stuff. So very often, React is trying, when, when it renders a component in development mode, it will render it twice. So if you try to play some tricks uh, with the state, uh, and you are modifying the state outside the set state functions, the render will be different. And so we'll tell you, give you a warning, say, OK, the, this, your component is not a pure component because the, the rendering is not consistent uh, with the properties and state value. And this means, uh, OK, this uh, is already what we did before. Uh, yeah. No, I want I wanted to show you that. Okay, this is uh, it's, uh, it's important to comment uh, um, as much as possible. So state of course is a key component, huh? but we should use it only when we need. Uh, use the state in the minimum amount of state variables as possible. Don't be afraid. Afraid of recomputing properties starting from current state. So if you have a state variable from which you can derive many properties, as much as possible, we should, we should try to use properties derived from a, a little state information. So if you have one state in one component, don't try to create another state in a children component, in a child component that basically has the same value. Huh? Uh, it would be difficult to keep them in sync, if not impossible. Always rely on the upper state and pass down the set of functions in order to, to modify them. Move the state to the common ancestor. So uh, like we did with the exam table, we could not move down the state uh, editable because it was needed by more than one of its children. There is no need to move it up to the upper component, for example. No, we have a, a total level component, which is in app.js. There's no need to move it up again uh, because it's not needed in other parts of the application, only on this table. So we find the right, right, right spot where to define the state. High enough to be visible to all the children that need it, that need its value or need to modify it, but not higher. 
And uh, okay, which is the properties to pass the state and the, the callback function to whenever the children need to update. Okay, our next step would be to do the real exercise for today to be able to modify or to evolve this list of examples. Uh, right now, we have uh, only one constant here, and so the rendering is fixed. What we want to do is to make the list of exam a state variable, so that this state variable may be changed from inside our application. Uh, it's better to start uh, easy. Huh? Uh, the why is that? Like, let me go to app. And where where is this data coming from? It's coming from my exam list. My exam name is called uh, load data, and load data created a new exam list object. So the, my first question would be: Can we store into the state? An exam list object. Yes, no. Yes, I could, but no, because exam list was not designed to be immutable. We have a mutable method. The add will change a property of the object. So we should have a, 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 an object that is designed with immutability with functional behavior in mind. So the, uh, the add method should not modify the inside of the object, and rather should uh, return a new copy of the object with a new element appended. So this uh, um, exam list object is not good for us as a state variable because it has some dangerous method method that will try to change the inside of the state without going through set state to the hook. OK? So uh, I don't want to change it right now. So probably let's start simple. Let's start with the list of the exams. OK, these objects are, has this exam list property, which is just an array. So we can use this uh, load data to create the object, which OK, is, is fine. With this exams, uh, remember the exam doesn't have any, is an immutable object. Okay, exam doesn't do anything to its property, just creates the object. There are no ways, uh, if we don't do it, <laughs> there are no ways for, if we don't do it ourselves, to change the property of an object. So it's okay. It's okay to use object. We must be very careful not to modify any objects in the state. Okay, state variables should be immutable functional values. So what I'm saying is that in the app, um, I should create some state remembering the exams. And this state should not be in the form of the exam list object, but maybe just the array of exams. OK? And. Uh, I can create a new state in this case. Uh, why am, am I creating the state in app? Because it's used for also for the exam, but also for the for printing the average and so on. So the list of exams in this case uh, is a, a property of the whole application. And it's probably needed to all the components. So I am defining it in app. If I decided to define the list of exams in um, exam table here, I wouldn't be able to show the average here. Because from up, I cannot see the value of a state inside. OK, so we're creating the state here, uh, which is uh, uh, exams, set exam, equal to use state. Default value, the default value could be an array of current exams. Uh, 
and I can this array is already being loaded into exam list dot exam list like that. Of course, again, we are initializing the state using a constant that we buried into our code. In the future, we have to change that initialization by loading something from the server. The important point is that we are not loading this from a properties. App doesn't have any props. From our point of view, it's a constant. In future, we want to load it from a database, but right now it's a constant. Okay? A constant computed by this function load data. So I initialize the state with a constant. And right now I have exams and set exams. Exams will be a state variable or what type? Array of exam objects. Remember from the exam list attribute is just an array where we are adding exam objects. Okay, so let me explicit. So my state is an array of objects of type exam. And now we want to remove any reference to my exam list from the rest of the code. The rest of the code should create my score table starting from the state value from this exam. Okay, so we should change something. Uh, of course, uh, exams doesn't have any average function because it's just an array, so we should compute our own average. And the uh, exams, uh, right now it was supposed to receive uh, an exam list object, and right now we don't have any exam list object, only uh, some list. So we should have some modif modification of the types. So let's try to do couple of simple steps uh, to recreate it and then we can have a break before before uh, handling with the state modifications so for now our goal for the next uh, five minutes would be recompute all the interface starting from exams as a constant the only difference is, is that it's a this is a constant as a constant state so in an immutable value, we are not changing it any, uh, uh, already at the moment. Uh, this constant is not an uh, exam list object, but just an array of objects. So we need just to change some details. I want exam list to disappear from uh, uh, everywhere. So exam equal to exams. Maybe the average for the moment uh, we just show exams dot uh, length just to show something which is of course not the average but uh, just to, to see that something is working okay so we need to, to hmm? not here sorry inside javascript and the exam table now receives uh, already the array of exam objects. So I go to exam table. Uh, the all the property that was called exam exams uh, was an exam list uh, from which I computed the list of exams just by extracting that. So I can just remove uh, simply remove this statement. We already were in the previous version of the component. Uh, no, and now I realize we uh, we were already extracting the list uh, from the object. We don't need it anymore because we don't have the object anymore. And exams is just the, um, the list. So we just have props of exam. So, but map. so we just removed the shell, OK? The exam list was inside the, the list of exams, the array was inside the next uh, object. We removed the object and we just working with the array itself. 
So it should uh, exams dot map is not a function. Exams dot map is not a function. It's telling me that exams is not an array. So what did they pass to you? Oh, I forgot to save the file. Sorry. Okay. So right now we are recreating everything. It's the same interface with the change button and uh, everything else. The difference is that uh, the exam table receives a copy of the state and not a copy of the constant. But inside the exam table, there's no difference, basically, apart from the type of the object versus uh, uh, array, because a property is always a constant to a component. So that's why they didn't need to, to understand the change. It's a constant value that app, only app, knows uh, that is a dynamic state. For rendering, it, nothing changes. I'm an, I have an array of objects. I pass in this array to exam table and does the right thing to, to render them. The complex part becomes when we are trying to modify this list. Okay? So we have these buttons down there that need to be able in some way to modify the state uh, up there into up. We will apply the same method. It will be a, a bit more complicated because the state is not longer just a Boolean, just a value, but it's, a, it's an array data structure. So we need to be careful with, with modifications. OK? But I think that we deserve some break right now before diving into this, right? <laughs>